I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com and today we'll be looking at smart objects and just why you need to be using them, if you aren't already. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level photo manipulation. Fun fact, I stupidly went years without using smart objects and I want to make sure you don't make the same mistake because boy was it a mistake. So we are here to talk about smart objects. To put it simply, smart objects keep an image's original data intact, so nothing is ever permanently edited. So perfect for those of you with commitment issues and who like to work uh, non-destructively, which we should all strive to do. I'm going to hide my color grade here and then let's create a smart object. So to create a smart object, select either a single or group of layers and right click convert to smart object. You can then click on the newly created smart object to access all of the original images inside, which you can edit, then save, updating the smart object in the original file. You can also edit the smart object itself. For instance, this squid is a smart object, so I can enlarge it without worrying about it becoming blurry or permanently distorted. Now, as you may have noticed, I didn't do a very good job extracting this squid. If I double click opening the smart object, we can see the layer's mask is still intact. So let's talk about layer masks inside of smart objects. Let's say I didn't know if I wanted to use this squid or not. So I just quickly use select subject to extract the squid, turned the squid and its mask into a smart object, and then messed around with the placement and color until I was like, yeah, I'm going to use them. I can now double click his layer, delete the sloppy layer mask and create a proper one or simply edit the one he already has. Save and it will be updated in the main canvas. You can save and close, um, just save and flip back and forth, or you can do what I like to do and pop out your smart object and see the main canvas update as you save. This way you can make tons of tiny little changes without having to flip back and forth over and over and over again. Like on a regular canvas, you can always undo if you don't like the change. And if you close the main canvas and don't save, then none of your changes made to the smart objects will be saved either. So when you are saving a smart object, you are not saving the main PSD. So creating layer masks and then converting it into a smart object is also great if you want um, double layer masks. For instance, anytime I extract a subject, I extract the body first, convert to a smart object, and then add a new layer mask to the smart object to then extract the hair. That way I can fiddle around with the body mask at any point in the future. And realistically, 9 out of 10 times I don't, but I like to have the option. I like the security of it just being there. Now, smart objects aren't just for creating layer masks on layer masks on layer masks. Another reason to use smart objects is so you don't have to commit to any adjustments ever. Add an adjustment, uh, decide eh, needs a bit of tweaking, double click and readjust or delete altogether. Or layer multiple of the same adjustments on top of each other. Or shuffle them around and change their order. And I know that's all stuff adjustment layers can do, but all this also applies to filters, and that's where the real magic begins. No more committing to a specific kind or level of blur. For example, these light flares here are completely intact triangles. I can even change the color of the shape. But more than that, I can adjust both types of blur filters, adjusting them as my image progresses and things change. You can even copy filters and adjustments onto other smart objects. So I want these bubbles to be the same kind of blue and blur. I just adjust one of the bubbles and copy the settings onto the other smart objects by holding alt and then dragging and dropping. We are going to finish off this 
kind of list uh, with filter masks. When you add a filter to a smart object, a little filter mask will be added as well. These work just like layer masks, except they affect the filters applied to the smart object. I'm going to hit Ctrl or Command I to invert the tentacle's color and then use a soft black brush to erase the inverted filter from everywhere but the base of the tentacle. White, of course, brings back the filter. But I also want the tentacles to have some motion blur to them, and if I add it now, it will only show where the blue is shown. All filters are affected by the filter mask. So let's double click the tentacle showing the original and its layer mask, which I don't really want to compromise. I could, but why should I when I can just turn that layer into another smart object? We can now click and see the layer mask is still 100% intact and able to edit. And we can then close that smart object so that we can edit this smart object. I'm going to select some areas using the lasso tool really quickly, uh, nothing too fancy. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Radio Blur. Just guessing some settings for now as well. Now let's save, because remember we are still in a smart object. And then we can see what our motion blur looks like on our main canvas. If it's a little too much, no problem. Just double click and edit until it's all good. So basically, don't be afraid to create smart objects inside of smart objects. Do be smart about it though, or you'll create a hat within a hat within a hat situation, and it will get kind of confusing somewhat quickly. A few things to note. First, most, if not all, tool effects will not work on smart objects. So let's say if you want to use the smudge tool on a smart object, um, you will have to rasterize that layer. Two, adjustment layers and layer modes do not work inside smart objects if on a transparent background. And three, smart objects can slow Photoshop down if you don't have a good chunk of memory or RAM. But if you have 64 or even 32 gigs of RAM, then you'll probably be okay. So to sum it up, right click convert to smart object works on both single layers and groups. Smart objects are one of your best tools for non-destructive editing, as they keep your layer masks, filter, and adjustment settings all intact and easy to adjust. And finally, don't be afraid to go all smart object inception with it. Smart objects within smart objects. I think that about sums it up. So like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.